Welcome back to the channel and this is going to be a comparison of three phase rotation meters. The peak meter PM5900, the amp probe PRM6EUR and the Fluke9062. This one is dirt cheap, £35 in the UK. Uh, the amp probe is a step up, sort of 90 to 100 pound, and the fluke there is circa 220 pounds. So what I'm going to do is run them on the little inverter and do a phase rotation of the little three-phase motor I have got. All of these instruments do have the same capability. They can measure phase rotation of a supply. They can do a motor rotation test on the windings and they can also magnetically pick up motor rotation as well. I'm not sure how well that will work with such a small motor though, so, but we'll give it a go uh, a little bit later. Okay, so I'll get things set up and I will test the peak meter first. Okay, first meter is set up on the inverter. We'll turn down to zero, we'll switch her on and we already have two lights lit on the peak meter and we're on zero. There's five more or less and we get flashing lights so we've got phase indication but no direction of rotation. I don't think you have to... Uh, yeah, nothing constant there. Let's go up to ten. Oh, we've got a smack on. So a bit more rotation. Rotation. It's twenty percent. Now we're displaying pretty well now. Uh, so we can get uh, twenty-five. Keep calling that percent. It's not. It's the frequency. So we can't determine supply rotation yet. We can get the lights. Let's go up to. 40 there, so the lights are on steady now. It works, but we're not getting any rotation. Up to 50%, and still not getting any rotation, so it works fine for actually detecting the presence of the voltage output, but I can't determine the phase rotation on this meter. Okay, so we'll wind down and we'll stick the amp probe in its place. Okay, so there's our amp probe. Switch on again. Zero. Yeah, so we've got two phases present. And we've got two five again. Okay, and so we've got phase presence there. So we've got phase presence there. It can't really. It's giving me a left for rotation. It doesn't like it, does it? Okay, so we'll go up to 10. Sense so now we've got both of them. Go up to 20. So still got both of them in there. Let's see. 25. Still both of them. So 30, 35. All oh, right, okay. So at 35, it looks like it's starting to pick up clockwise rotation, which is correct for the way it's been wired up. 40 there, and at 40, yeah, we've got proper uh, three-phase rotation and proper indication of the actual direction of rotation as well. Uh, 45, so we know we're going to be good at 50. Okay, so yeah, 35, 40% seems to start to work okay. Uh, the other thing with this one is press the button to bring the light on but in actual fact it, it will work automatically without uh, pressing the, the on button when it's powered up from a supply it does that all automatically okay so we'll switch him off and we'll plug the fluke in if you've seen the video on the MTR 105 you'll have seen this in operation anyway but I'll do it for those that haven't seen this video and here we go, switch him on. So this meter is a bit like the peak meter. You, uh, there's five there, so it does start to display like the other ones do. You can actually see the voltage is there. Um, it doesn't understand phase rotation. Uh, and unlike the amp probe, 
you have to manually press the button on this to activate that function, whereas the AMP probe is more automatic, which I tend to prefer. And there's 10%. And again, we won't, still doesn't like it. Um, I think if I remember correctly, uh, it's 25. This was 35, so it kind of get it there at 25. 30-ish. Yeah, that's 35. 40. A little bit to 50. At 50 you get it constant, pretty good. You know that it's clockwise rotation and all three phases there. So similar sort of operation to the amp probe. Okay, so we'll reconfigure and go for motor rotation. All right, we're set up with the peak meter connected to the motor. So this will check the motor direction, depend upon the winding connection. To do this again, if I spin the motor, you don't get any response. So it's one of these ones you have to hold the test button in and then flick the motor. And then you can see it's actually quite sensitive. Yeah, that's your fat quarter of a turn. Order of a turn will get it. And if we go back the other way, left. Okay, so that seems to work fine. Uh, quite sensitive. We'll uh, unplug him, and we'll plug in our amp probe. So our amp probe plugged in. Again, with this one, you're going to have to. Okay. Oops. Okay, about half a turn really to, to do this one, so not quite as sensitive, but works fine. Picks up other direction. So that one works fine, not quite as sensitive as the peak meter. And finally we do the fluke. So we're going to fluke, no, no activity with it switched, without it switched on. Uh, this is about, yeah, so half a turn does this one. But again, it works fine. So similar sort of sensitivity to the amp probe unit. Uh, again, all three units work fine on actually detecting the winding connections for the phase rotation. So what I'll do is I'll just check to see if these will pick up such a small motor with their magnetic input. Okay, so the final element of the testing of these three motor and phase rotation testers is to test the magnetic pickup that is within each of these units. Um, you can see on the front of one of these, you can see a picture of a motor in here. So you line this up with the side of the motor, the shaft pointing in the same direction as the motor, and you'll be able to tell which direction it's going in. So I'm going to put it into forward, uh, I'm going to put the motor into, okay, so that's actually 15. The motor rotation is in this direction. We'll go with the peak meter first. And I'll hold it against the side. And it's actually, uh, it's actually displaying the opposite direction. Okay. So you can see, depending on where you get the sensor, affects the reading that you get. Over here, it doesn't like it, wouldn't it here? It's showing the right direction, but that's opposite to the actual motor symbol. Okay, uh, we'll go for Mr. Fluke. Try here as well. And let's put him over here. So again, you see this time we've got the right direction of rotation being displayed. Um, and finally try and that one's doing the same again so that's what all three working and the actual pickup just the peak meter going in the wrong direction wind him up to full speed in reverse order this time and there you can see direction of rotation clearly displayed in the amp probe 
imagine the fluke <laughs> slightly different position on the motor but yeah that works fine as well and the peak meter obviously this is going to show uh, wrong direction is it well it doesn't like that at all does it uh, ooh, okay okay so we're right at the front here That's bizarre, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we get correct direction of rotation there, incorrect, get it over here, and in the middle, it's messing around. Let's try uh, this. It doesn't like it over here. Yeah, at least with uh, these other two. So again, you've got incorrect directional rotation there on that one. That one's fine. Yeah, so you do have to be careful where you position these uh, on the motor. Um, Fluke and the amp probe, I'm quite happy with uh, this peak meter. Yeah, not quite right. Um, could be that it needs a slightly bigger motor than this one with a uh, stronger magnetic field on it to make it work better. Um, so it's uh, not the best of the bunch, this one. So that was the last of the tests on the motor and phase rotation testers. Peak meter, not quite there for me. Um, I'd be cautious about going out and buying this one to be honest, so it boils down between the fluke and the amp probe. Undoubtedly the quality of the fluke, both of the meter itself and the casing around it, and especially the leads and the probes that come with it, are far better than the amp probe. But of course you're paying for that a lot more for that. The amp probe to me is actually quite a good offering. The probes on there admittedly are not as nice a quality Personally, I don't use the probes an awful lot when I'm doing uh, these kind of tests. It would probably be the crocodile clips, so I'm hands-free off of everything. Um, so I would quite happily settle for the amp probe unit. I get the case with that as well, which I have to fork out a little bit extra for a case for the fluke. Um, so yeah, I, I think the amp probe one is perfectly satisfactory for doing this kind of testing. I'd be quite happy with that unit. Um, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next video.